You want new Pokemon to capture? Can't capture them all! Toy paradoxes. They're like your dad's paradoxes that he keeps in his room and won't let you play with them. Oh no, I'm that dad now, aren't I? <laughs> Uh, anyway, if you haven't checked out the previous Toy Paradox video to learn more about them, just you can go here, but in summary, a third or I guess fourth Paradox type if you include my Beast Paradoxes, these are all toy adjacent Pokemon. I thought I'd do some of the ideas I really like that were said in the previous video's comments, as well as one of my own that I just couldn't help but do. For now, let's just jump straight into one of the world's most famous toys in a Toy Paradox that would sure to be controversial. Hi Barbie! Hi Ken! Barbie! Hi 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 Barbie! Barbie! Barbie fever will never end. I saw the Barbie movie. I liked it. Maybe Barbies weren't for me. I was more of an action man sort of guy, which I guess really isn't that different. <laughs> man, isn't it easy to just slightly change a gendered concept to something else? Especially back in the day, I feel like an 80 year old man right now. But damn. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Yeah, this was a comment suggested for a God of War Barbie, which I think is so fitting it's wild. I feel like Hatterin could also be in this as a sort of toy paradox with a hat accessory. Wait, don't be fooled. She's just a regular Malibu Stacy with a stupid cheap hat. But she's got a new hat. But this toy paradox is a bit of a twist to it, playing off how Gardevoir and Gallade were sort of mushed together for the future paradox, our latest toy paradox here comes in two flavours. No gender or anything like that, it's just you can find one or the other. My idea for Gardevoir was fairly simple, I wanted to play up that sort of vision of Barbie being this very simple pinkish dress with long blonde hair and a cheesy smile, something so kind of hyper generic for the original Barbie, and here is no different. It was a bit hard to find a good placement for the horn parts here. Initially it was just a head bow and the Marge Simpson necklace drip. Part of me wants to see this as a Marge Simpson now. I thought it'd be funny to turn the side head parts into earrings. It looks ridiculous, but also fits a little too well. Luckily all of this is just some kind of weird plastic creature because all of this being flesh and horn is so horrifying to me. The original was okay, but I wanted to update it to feel more stiff. I felt like the original didn't feel or capture that, like, plastic toy feeling, and the vision was more of them doing that generic forearms up sort of that Barbie in Toy Story does, so I reworked it ever so slightly. I changed the pose and outfit as well as get rid of the Marge necklace and instead turn it into a nice looking bow, a little more modern looking. Let's jump into Kenade next here as they are technically the same Pokemon. When I started the Ken one, the hardest parts were where to put the joints for it. The Barb de Voir was easy because the dress covered up most of the body, meaning I didn't have to show all those finicky joint bits. I wanted to get that good Barbie movie Ken in here too, having a bit of a goofy yet high sass personality, with a little mix of Alan from the Barbie movie, or should I just say Michael Sarah from the Barbie movie. I wanted to try and keep a bit of that Gallade hairstyle in our Ken version here, but Ken definitely doesn't have a large head spike. Only in the prehistoric Ken set with his mating ritual battle horn, so here I decided to instead have it look like he has a large slicked hair, even going over one eye and with the horn becoming a sort of cowlick slick part, and I think it works fairly well. The fit here is an ascot with button up shirt and long pants, leading to some very large shoesies. I did go back and rework the pose here too, changing it to, again, that hands up stiffer pose to really show that it doesn't have the best movement abilities here, just sort of bounces along with its 13 points of articulation. <laughs> Plastic Posse, the Paradox Pokemon. A psychic in dark or fairy in dark type, depending on which type you get. A Pokemon found inside the pages of a mysterious catalogue. A combination of two seemingly lovely dolls that hide a dark side. Coming in two forms, they vaguely resemble Gardevoir and Gallade. Rarely seen apart, groups of the plastic posse only allow their own members, brutally beating other Pokemon until they leave, laughing behind their backs. Their eerie movements, thanks to their joints, make them often disliked Pokemon, which doesn't help to stop their alienating tendencies. If their trainer doesn't act like them, they will leave the trainer. Plastic Posse has the ability Whimsy Core.
I love Transformers. I still remember going to the local reject shop and getting Beast Wars figures for like 12 bucks and now you can purchase them again for... Oh, that's a reasonable and fair price. Thank you, capitalism. Big thumbs up for you. There's so many Pokemon that could be Transformers, but I thought a fairly easy one here was Cyclozar. So, Autobots, roll out. I remember how cool the Digimon Transformers were. I still have a few of them and was always upset that Pokemon never did this. Initially, I was going to make a Cyclozar that could transform to Coridon and Maridon, but it was way too much for me to try and accomplish and figure that all out. I'm just not a toy desirer enough, it seems. So instead, I thought it could be a sort of chunky Cyclozar robot with a bit of inspiration from the Transformer Grimlock. But instead of transforming into a humanoid mode, I decided instead to make it transform into a motorcycle. Which, yeah, is low hanging fruit and all that, but it's cool. Unlike Future Paradox mods, which keep a lot of Pokemon shape design curves and whatnot, our toy paradoxes ditch most of that, and this Cyclozar is boxy and chunky and not in the slightest aerodynamic, only able to waddle around, which I guess is a running theme for a lot of toy paradoxes here. Pretty much just look at Toy Story and their movements for how our toy paradoxes would move for the most part. For Diecast Cycle here, you just have to go into your menu and go to the Transform option to switch him out. No need for the long manuals and forgetting how to properly transform it here. I always had when Transformers had parts you'd have to pull off and reattach elsewhere. Always took me out of the cool transformation. Sadly, our Transformer here needs that ever so slightly, as the wheel pops out of the chest and slots into the, both the hands comfortably. Luckily, he can do it himself and we don't have to touch it at all. I can just feel the flimsiness of it as it would constantly fall out. How authentic is that experience? Each of the forms have the steel type that swaps Cyclozar's primary type between forms. The robot form gets the normal type while the motorcycle gets the dragon typing, as well as switching between a defensive to offensive battle style respectively. Maybe there could be an item that could hold instead of booster energy that would allow it to transform or something. Part of me almost thought it'd be funny to make a more Transformers Michael Bay movie design for these ones. Just all these bits everywhere, but that would not fit Pokemon design whatsoever. Explosions maybe, but that's about it. <laughs> Diecast Cycle, the Paradox Pokemon. A normal in steel in its Cyclozar form and a dragon in steel in its motorcycle form. A Pokemon found inside the pages of a mysterious catalog, a form-changing robot that vaguely resembles the Pokemon Cyclozar. It slowly lumbers around in its robot form, possessing an incredibly bulky body designed to absorb hits. It stays in this form when it needs to blend in with other Pokemon. Upon transforming, it becomes akin to a motorcycle, complete with handlebars for riders. In this form, it is blazingly fast and capable of dealing great damage. Sometimes people accidentally transform this Pokemon incorrectly, leading to new forms. Diecast Cycle has the ability Whimsy Core in both forms. Ah, the classic sticky hand. It feels the oldest of the toys here, but probably isn't. Someone suggested a sticky hand eye palm, and I thought that was such a good idea for the design. Although here I do change the design a few times, although the basic essence stays the same. Sticky hands have always made me kind of grossed out, which makes sense as sticky things have always made me feel sick, like Ugh, chewing gum, the uh, blue tack, and all that ugh, makes me dry just thinking about it. Ugh. Sticky hands to me just represent the ultimate dirt and dust collector as one second on any surface and it is instantly destroyed. My idea was to have our little monkey fella keeping its sort of general shape, minus the arms and having the tail being this even larger than normal yucky goopy sticky hand. The main problem was once the sticky hand goes to kind of the other end, it only just a loop. So I thought, what if instead we made the main head just a bit of the hand itself? The ears and free head bubbles become a whole hand in itself and means that both ends are now made for slapping. The original design was alright, but it felt like some kind of weird Space Channel 5 or Teletubbies character. So we went for another pass on it, making the head both a hand and a bit of a ring as well, surrounding the little sad face of our goopy hand boy here. Normal poison for this one. I can't think of anything more fitting for a gross sticky hand. Maybe fighting, but it makes me sick, so there's your justification. <laughs> Rubber Hand, the Paradox Pokemon, a normal and poison type. A Pokemon found inside the pages of a mysterious catalogue, a sticky, toxic creature that vaguely resembles the Pokemon iPod. 
Its entire stretchy body is covered in an extremely sticky film that allows it to grab anything with its large hand tail. The stickiness of the film makes it almost impossible to escape once stuck. Rubber Hand hides in the top corners of rooms, waiting to slap its sticky hand onto its prey. They struggle to walk, leaving squelching noises as they move, which is the best way to tell when one is nearby. Trying to battle with Rubber Hand usually ends in a sticky mess of a battle. Look deep into your $2 shop, op shop, whatever you call it, in your country, and you may find some little friends, some small soldier perhaps, of the plastic persuasion. When I was younger, I tried to melt these with a lighter, but what's wrong with me? But these guys were cheap and affordable fun before Call of Duty became a thing, and now older people can play with plastic soldiers without the shame. This was another suggestion for plastic soldier phalanx, and it's just so perfect. I could see it in my head the minute it was suggested. My main concern was with the idea of the weaponry. I didn't want to give them like actual guns or anything, but I instead decided to go with the idea of them having sort of roles in their little platoon. Our leader with the big horn now gets almost like a sci-fi blaster, while the rest of them go for um, almost a sort of rifleman, and the other two are more kind of generic soldiers, with the one in the back already toppled over and plays a bit of that fumbling, bumbling soldier that all the others are a little ashamed of. Typing for this one was a bit hard, Part of me wanted to do something wild like ice type for because plastic melding and all that, but I decided for dark type with the idea of weaponry and you know, the military just being a bit messed up in general. Dark type fit pretty well. <laughs> plastic Platoon, the paradox Pokemon are fighting in dark type. A Pokemon found inside the pages of a mysterious catalog, a congregation of little soldiers created to protect the person who purchased them no matter the cost. The ranks of Plastic Platoon can be seen in their marching order. The leader, most intricate of the group, is up front, while the more feeble and less impressive members are at the rear. Together, they are most deadly. They have a powerful hop and will use it to launch themselves into full-blown tackles. If they are toppled, however, it is rather difficult for them to stand on their own, especially if the entire group has fallen. These last two are ones I've thought of myself and need to bring into the world. The first one is something I've never actually had, well, in a regular form. It was something I always wanted, even now I still kind of want one. These curious griffin-like freaks, of course it's the Furby. But what Pokemon fits a Furby theme? Go on, take a guess. Here's a clue. It's a starter. A grass starter. Okay, you ready? It's one of our wonderful starter Pokemon, Grookey. Yeah, you see the comparison? Please tell me you see it. I weirdly love Furbies so much, they're just these strange little alien fellas. They fascinate me. Nowadays they're strange little tech creatures, but they're still cool. I have two long Furbies, one in pocket size and the other an absolute worm of a creature, as well as I've created Furby costumes. So my obsession with these things are kind of apparent. To turn Grookey into one of these was almost too easy. It's like cooking. Get your Grookey and remove the lower body. Place it into a pot with at least two cups of green fur and cook until it's all combined together. And any branches have been cooked out of the mix. I feel like the almost creepy front on view, while isn't exactly very Pokemon, works quite well for this and gives me this feeling of it sitting on my table and doing that creepy Furby babbling. Typing I chose Grass Fairy here, maybe Electric would have worked too seeing as underneath this now is just this horrible animatronic like Five Nights at Freddy's looking thing. And being a physical attacker, this thing would leap at enemies just like Five Nights at Freddy's jump scares. Maybe I should be a real weirdo and just start collecting Furbies. If someone ever makes me a Furby that looks like this and sends it to me, I'll literally make an entire video thanking you and drawing Pokemon that you asked for. I mean it. Fuzzy Freak, the Paradox Pokemon, a fairy and grass type. A Pokemon found inside the pages of a mysterious catalog. A smash hit of a creature that despite its rather curious relation to the Pokemon Grookey became a short-lived sensation. It loves to sing along to their trainers and even can slightly mimic actual human voices, albeit in a creepier tone. Fuzzy Freak does seem to have a single song that they all know and will sing in perfect unison. Despite their friendly, adorable nature, they will heedlessly fling themselves into battle, gnawing on the foe with their small beak, a surprisingly effective threat. My final design here is a bit of a jab to the collectors out there, but we're taking a trip to the landfill here. Come with me. Oh look, 
It's a veritable wonderland of vinyl garbage. Welcome to the Funko Pop legacy. So this one almost speaks for itself. I literally just wanted to make a Funko Pop Paradox Pokemon based off the foulest, nastiest Pokemon possible. And I went to Twitter to ask people about it, and while I got a lot of good answers, things like Skuntank and Swallowed, but there was one that was so obvious I'm surprised I didn't think of it sooner, and it was Garbodor. I mean, he is the trashiest, most landfill Pokemon possible. Making it into a Funko Pop was surprisingly easy. That large box-like head and black solar eyes were enough to make you understand what this thing is. If you can't tell, I'm not a Funko Pop person, although I do have TF2 ones. That's more because I just love TF2 so much and even their merch transcends my biases. But it's just funny stepping into the local EB and seeing walls of these soulless creatures staring back at you. I honestly think I did pretty well capturing those Funko Pop proportions and looks here, hence why I think Funko should hire me to help design every Pokemon as Funko Pops. So I can have an entire house built entirely out of every Pokemon Funko Pop in a back alley as I've spent all my money on vinyl trash. <coughs> vinyl trash, the paradox Pokemon, a poisoned and ghost diet. A Pokemon found inside the pages of a mysterious catalogue. A mass-produced Pokemon that was popular for a short while but the novelty wore off, and now vinyl trash fills landfills everywhere. Due to widespread distaste and misuse of this Pokemon, they became vengeful and now turn the landfills they inhabit into enclaves where they attack anything that gets too close. Toxic payloads are unleashed upon any would-be trespasser. Despite everything, their bodies are quite hardy, making it difficult to defeat them. That's why landfills were seen as the only appropriate response to this Pokemon. Alright, that's enough pop shade thrown around. What'd you think of the video? Comment down below your thoughts as well as any toy paradox forms you'd like to see. Maybe I'll do another vid with them in it. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like these. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.